In this enormous world of seven billion people, there aren't many people that you can truly call a world-leading expert. Uh, Andy mentioned this earlier. I think in skateboarding, he was thinking of Tony Hawk. In sushi, he was thinking of Jiro Ono. With chess, the name on the tip of his tongue was Bobby Fischer. And in the field of voice recognition and noise cancellation, Dr. Chris Parkinson stands as a giant. He spent over a decade focused on leading the science of and perfecting the functionality of hands-free, voice-driven user interfaces. At Copen, he was recognized as one of the lead inventors of the GoldenEye system. And as you heard earlier, he's authored tons of patents in this space. And his PhD is from the University of Manchester. So without further ado, please welcome Dr. Chris Parkinson, CTO of Realware, to the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. If we can see the slides, please. Uh, Technical genius can't operate laptop. Okay, bear with me. Okay, like I said. Okay, now we're ready. All righty. So I wanted to introduce you all to my little friend here, the HMT-1. You've seen, a, you've heard a little bit from Andy this morning in his reveal. The purpose of my presentation, the short presentation, is to just walk you through the technical aspects of what it looks like, how it feels, how you wear it, and how you use it. As we've seen earlier, this device comprises many technical features. But essentially, it's an Android phone. The same Android phone that you have in your pocket today, we have broken apart, recompiled it, readjusted it, and refitted it into this form factor. So that's what we're looking at. It's nothing more scary than your Android phone or your Android tablet. We have a battery that runs around on the side here, the replaceable, hot swappable battery. And we have all the electronics in this side. Again, just your standard Android 6 device. We have a nice camera pointing forwards at the front. 16 megapixels of the image stabilization and all the great features that come with that. And down on the front, we call the boom arm. That takes me to the display. Now from the outside, the display doesn't look too big. In fact, it's actually 0.33 inch diagonal, the, the actual display size. But when I look inside the magnifying optics, I get the appearance of a seven inch tablet right in front of my face. And that's essentially what we have here. We have the Wi-Fi, we have the Bluetooth, we have the GPS, we have the six axis accelerometers and gyroscopes, and we have the digital compass. We have all the technology that you typically find in your phone, with the exception of cellular. Cellular radio is an optional extra on this device. So how do you wear it? Well, this device is worn over the head. I'll demonstrate. It's worn over the head, like so, in this case with an elastic strap, and it sits below the line of sight of my dominant eye. Because we're below the line of sight, I can see you all clearly. I can walk around. I'm not going to trip over the steps when I walk down there. And when I'm on an industrial site, I can see clearly any obstacles or any dangers coming at me left, right, center, or top. So it becomes very easy for me to wear this, but also be aware of what's around me. The, the metaphor, really, is the same as driving. You drive, 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 you look long distance ahead of you through the windshield. And that's what I'm doing now, is looking at you all. 
if I want to check the speed of my car, I look down at the dashboard. That's what I'm doing now. I just glance down into my dashboard, and there is my big screen with a display. And I look back up again, no worries. I can see everything quite clearly. And it turns out the, the display here is focused at about three, three to 20 feet, which is about perfect for when I'm working around here, doing anything around here. It means I can look at you guys, I can look down at the display, and my eyes do not need to refocus which is very important when I'm wearing this for the eight hours, 12 hour shift. I'm looking up, looking down, looking up, looking down, and there's no stress on my eyes. So it just becomes a natural wearable device. Now, we also have to wear this on our, well, with our dominant eye. It turns out about 50% of the population are left eye dominant, 50% are right eye dominant. I think we'll have a quick test to see who is what at this point. So how do you test which is your dominant eye? Some of you may know this right off the bat, especially Texans. Texans know how to shoot better, so they know this stuff. So what I want you, this is the interactive part now. So I want you all to hold out your arm and make a little circle, and in the middle of the circle have the swirly purple thing. Now, if you close one eye and then close the other eye and open and close, open and close, the dominant eye is the one that allows the purple circle to stay in the middle of your hand. The non-dominant eye makes it jump out of the way. You get that? Great. So now I'll have a show of hands. How many people here think they're right eye dominant? Good. And how many people think they're left eye dominant? Perfect, that's about right, so good. So how do we account for these people in one device? It's very simple. Through the powers of the great Mr. Pombo, who we keep talking about over here, this legendary figure, we are able to just symmetrically flip over this device and wear it this way. So that's as easy as it becomes to be a left eye dominant system or a right eye dominant system. And at the same time, all the screen flips over and everything happens automatically. So it's very well designed for accommodating the whole 100% of the population out there. So what about controlling it now? So we've worn it, now we're gonna control it. I'm gonna put my hard hat variant on here. As we talked about earlier, it does clip into a hard hat, so it can be worn with or without, or with even a baseball cap. You also notice on this particular device, I've got the boom arm folded all the way back. It doesn't need to be in front of my face. And it turns out for many jobs on a job site, you don't need to display there all day long. So for the times I need it, I can just fold it down and into view. And when I don't need it, I just pop it back out again. So the, uh, another very important usability feature for all day long shifts. All right, if we can flip on the side screens now, I'm going to demonstrate the user interface of this device. And I'm gonna call on a volunteer to help me, because I've done this enough times, I don't need to go and do another demo. Uh, but I've got a stooge, where's James? James, come on up, please. So James, we've never met before, has never tried this before. I'm going to place it on your head, James. There we go. And we, again, we'll angle it. For the first time, you take a bit of fussing around to get it just right, but once you've worn this for more than 10 minutes, you know exactly how to just drop it in place and wear it. Okay, you see that clearly, James? You see yep. the screen? Great. Now, you, through the magic of TV, are able to see what James is looking at now on the screen. So this is now streaming live from the back of his Wi-Fi unit. So I'm gonna tell James what to say, and the whole premise here is that you just speak to it and it works. Remember, we are, we've built a hands-free device. You could have gloves on, you could have tools in his hand or boxes. He doesn't want to be swiping, touching, or anything like that, it's just voice. So let's start you off by saying um, about my files. My files. There we go, nice loud chirp. So up comes our file browser. So the, the premise here is that James is now out in the world and he wants to bring up some reference documentation, maybe some schematics, maybe a map, for example. So you can browse and see what we've got. Um, check out my documents. My documents. Oh, it pops. Now at this point, um, he's got a scrollable list in front of him, so he can just turn his head left, turn his head right, 
and it moves the scrolling list. There's none of his mouse or any swiping stuff. It's all hands-free. So he can bring up the documents in two ways now. He can either say the file name, or sometimes file names just aren't pronounceable. So he can then say, select item one, and that's an alternative to any file name. So if you want to bring up, say, the document, the Boeing document, you can bring up Dreamliner, or you can say, select item six. Dreamliner. Okay, now, you're standing a bit like a robot, so come for a walk with me. Most people do this for the first time they wear the thing. So you walk around and you feel it's quite natural. Is that right, James? Yeah. Good, better. great. Now, James is able to talk to me all the time. I'm able to talk to him. The microphones are always listening, always on. But because we've structured the speech recognition in such a way that it's just listening for those keywords, it's filtering out all the conversation. So we can be chatting. He can actually pair this up to his cell phone and have a Bluetooth conversation with me, but still be commanding this device as he needs to. All right, so you've got this Boeing 787 in front of you, but it's not really big enough, it's not useful. So I'd like to zoom into that, and you do that by saying zoom level two, for example. Zoom level two. But now it's got bigger. Now again, this is where we switch to head gesture control. We can move his head left, move his head right, move his head up and down to find the piece of information you want. It becomes very intuitive. And let's say, for example, James is focused on the tail fin. He can bring that right into his viewport and then lock the document down by saying, freeze document. Freeze document. Okay, locks it in place. So now when James walks around, the thing doesn't bounce around. Okay, let's, let's back up out of there now. If you say, navigate home. Navigate home. That takes us all the way back to our home screen. So now I'm gonna jump you in and we're gonna play something fun. So if you go into my files again, please. My files. And now let's go into my media. My media. Hmm, what do you think? Bit of Iron Man, Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1. Nice, great. So here's our movie player now running. At your service, sir. Now, the reality is we're not encouraging you to sit and watch TV for like an hour and a half, but this is about, you may well be having repair maintenance videos you want to start and stop and have voice command and control over. So just say video pause. I have indeed been uploaded. And what you notice on this system is that there's only a few commands per screen. And the commands are always written on the screen, or we can say show help to bring them up. So there's never a chance where you have to remember, you can go, oh, what, what am I meant to say? You can always then reference the screen. Let's continue by saying video play. Video play. I have indeed been up. So what you find is it just works. There's no training. It just goes. And I can put, put this on anyone else's head in the audience today, and it'll just work. It'll, there's no pre-training of the voice recognizer. We can put it on accents from many different languages. It just goes. All right, let's go back all the way to the home screen. Navigate home. And from the developer's point of view, all of these are not just demo files or demo tools, they are applications that we deliver on the headset that all the partners can use. If they have to prepare a document, they can use our viewer to track around it. And if they have a movie to play, they can use that as well. One of the most important features of our headset is the camera. If you say, my camera. My camera. This is our front-facing 16 megapixel camera. Very useful for walking around job sites, taking photographs, taking videos. But as you'll see later with the partners, even more useful when you connect onto Wi-Fi and start streaming the video and you get this point of view imagery working. So here's the camera looking around. And again, you can zoom in. You can say zoom level one, two, three, four, or five. Zoom level three. And if you want to take a photo, guess what? Take photo. Okay, that's about as good as it gets. So now you say navigate home. Navigate home. That was it. So we've basically just navigated our way through operating the whole system very conveniently, very easily. So at this point, I'm gonna let you go back down and quickly talk now about, thank you very much, Sir James. Round of applause. <laughs> So a lot of people have said, this speech recognition stuff, it doesn't work in the, envi in the environments we live in, these harsh environments. 
Well, this one does. This one was designed from day one to work in the harshest environments. We have one, two, three, four different sets of microphones here, which allow me to work in front of a jet engine, in front of a jackhammer, in all these really loud places, and obviously in the quiet places as well. And hopefully you'll get to see that. The caveat being, we are only in our beta release. We're six more months of tuning and optimization before we hit full production. So whatever you see today will continue to get better and better very quickly. But we also work not just in, in English. We will be releasing in up to 10 languages at uh, production time. And we have a couple of them already pre-built. Uh, let's have a look. If I hold down my button here, I can switch languages. Let's have a look. Let's go, let's see, Brazilian, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done the American one. Let's go to this one here. Marvelous. Right, so now we switch to Chinese. Do we have any Chinese speakers here that we can find, that I can find? Sonny, Sonny, come on up. Yes, we do. you. Another person I've never met before. <laughs> so, so just to prove that this does work in different environments, in different languages. Here we go, Sonny. Yeah. So my Chinese is abysmal. So I'm going to have to point now and say, Sonny, can you take me to my files, please? Test my Chinese. What of Indian? Great. Let's bring up, uh, bring up Iron Man again. Jarvis, you there? That's your surface. Uh, Marvelous. HHS Look at that. Display. Check. Port all preferences from home interface. We'll do so. I just there you go, that's it. So I have not got a clue what he's on about here, but it just works, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm just playing like live on stage here. <laughs> so we will have French, German, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean at launch time in July. Yeah. And all of them work with the noise cancellation. This great moment here. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. I'm going to okay. bush you off now, off the stage. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> and that, my friends, is essentially everything you need to know about the HMT1. Throughout the day, you'll be able to see this, try it for yourself. It really is a, a trying experience. I cannot give PowerPoints all day long. You've got to try this for yourself, and then you really understand the power of this device. So at this point, I'll bid you good well, and uh, let you try it, and we'll speak to you all later. So thank you.